As all know, uh, watching the news, that the, um, the coronavirus is kind of gripping the community and the country and the world, really. Um, so we, we as a town of Deerfield Select Board um, are going to um, declare an emergency as a res um, to respond to the COVID-19. So I'm going to read the declaration, and we'll take a vote on that. And, um, and then we didn't have this on the agenda. It's kind of coming up as um, unanticipated because things are moving fast. And, um, and I think as I go through this, you'll kind of understand why we're doing it and where we're, where we're going. We can talk about it after. So um, Town of Deerfield, emergency, emergency declaration to respond to COVID-19. Whereas on January 30th, 2020, the World Health Organization designated the 2019 Nobel uh, coronavirus outbreak as a public health emergency of international concern. Whereas on January 31st, 2020, the United States Health and Human Services Secretary Alex M. Azar II declared a public health emergency for the entire United States to aid the, nation, the nation's healthcare community in responding to the 2019 Nobel uh, coronavirus hereafter COVID-19, um, whereas the world out, uh, worldwide outbreak of COVID-19 and the effects of its extreme risk of person-to-person -person transmission throughout the United States and the Commonwealth significantly affect the life and health of our people, as well as the economy, and uh, is a disaster that impacts health, security, and safety of the public, whereas the disease caused by COVID-19 is a contagious and at times fatal respiratory disease the symptoms of which include fever, cough, and shortness of breath, and the disease can spread from person to person via respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Whereas, uh, whereas as of March 10th, 2020, according to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, there are more than 114,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 worldwide and over 4,000 of those cases have resulted in death. And there are more than 600 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the United States, with 25 of those cases having resulted in death, with 91 presumed positive cases of COVID-19 in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Whereas both travel-related cases and community contact transmission of COVID-19 have been detected in the Commonwealth, with such transmission expected to continue, whereas the Massachusetts Department of Public Health has instituted a public health incident management team to manage the public health aspects of the incident, whereas it is critical to take additional steps to prepare for, respond to, and mitigate the spread of COVID-19 to protect the health and welfare of the people of Deerfield, and whereas declaring a state of emergency will facilitate and expedite the use of town resources and deployment of local, regional, state, federal resources to protect, uh, protect persons from the impacts of the spread of COVID-19. Now, therefore, I, Trevor McDaniel, Chair of the Select Board and Board of Health of the Town of Deerfield of Massachusetts, hereby, hereby declare that as, at, as of 6 p.m. on March 10, 2020, a state of emergency exists in the Town of Deerfield. This declaration of emergency shall, shall remain in effect until notice is given, pursuant to my judgment that the state of emergency no longer exists. Or is it just the chair that declares? I think I would rather a vote anyways. Well, I you make can a motion sign that we want to slow the spread and decrease the opportunity for spread in our community of COVID-19. Um, so I endorse. Um, I think you should this. take a vote. Okay. You can. So uh, all those in favor of this declaration? You've got to second it first. Oh, second, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, how would you, um, Brenda, how, how do you want to, um, are you going to be able to keep, uh, what would work best for you to keep a uh, tally of our expenses? Part of the reason we declared an emergency is so that we can, you know, any supplies that we're buying, extra expenses incurred, to, um, would be um, potentially reimbursable. So um, how do you want us to start accounting for it? Let me think about that one. Okay. We might want to set up a whole new uh, account for it. Oh, right. Yep. Okay. Um, but but let me let me look into that and okay. get back to you tomorrow. Would that work? Perfect. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, That'd be great. What I wanted to do, one of the things, just to give you an idea of what I wanted to do, um, in our board of health expense, we have um, 
uh, infection control, uh, we have, you know, roughly $1,200. So um, one of the things I was thinking of is having the senior center buy, um, you know, like inexpensive spray bottles, get some bleach, and have the senior, you know, senior center staff actually put a little bleach in and mix it up so for the seniors and give them a roll of paper towels because there's no wipes anywhere so and we don't want them out looking driving around looking for stuff so the idea is to you know when they get done through their little spray bottle they can come back and get it refilled maybe even some latex gloves or mm -hmm. whatever for it, handling yep. the handling idea, the gas pump or or door handles things and, like and that right a lot of yep. and a lot of seniors are not going to go on um, this is our vulnerable group so this is the group we're going to try to protect so a lot of our seniors aren't going to go on the web and look up you know um, cdc.gov so we want to print out um, a packet of you know basic information and keep it updated and and so all those expenses, I think we can come out. I know our infectious control line usually is for rabies and sending out for exactly. rabies and stuff, but we can expend that money right away. I think for this is legit. So um, I would agree. Uh, at some point, we'll go to the finance committee for a reserve transfer once we've figured out what we're actually going to do. But for some of those expenses that can't be, that are new, I don't want to put it onto the senior center. So. Those are the kind of things I want you to think about um, okay. that we would probably want to do. Um, it, it, we're, we're not talking a lot of money, but the, certainly they would be reimbursable as an emergency response. So we'll tr figure out receipts and all that kind of stuff. But that might be a good line item for it. But let me think about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah. So Thank we're, um, I know that Carolyn's been speaking with. Um, a lot of people um, being in touch with our superintendent and um, has been gathering a lot of information working with the local health group. Um, so we'll probably have more information on this tomorrow, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So our main I, meetings tomorrow, we, we're just doing budgets today, but we felt like it was important to start keeping track of expenses and it seems to be moving fast enough that we would want to be prepared to protect the residents as best we can. I, I, I just want to say that I, I feel so, um, we feel so blessed to have, we, I think we have a really good team um, at the superintendent's office. The superintendent mm -hmm. is fantastic, very, very proactive, let's or be organized, planned out, and um, it's really nice working on a um, committee. Uh, I co-chair the Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition. We're meeting and we've set up a joint information system committee, subcommittee, and I'm co-chairing that, and we're meeting regularly. We're, you know, sometimes twice a week already. So we're going to send out messaging, messaging to the community. Trevor's been posting it. We've, it's on our web page. We're trying to post these things and get keep everyone up to date with our information as much as we can. And we'll talk about this stuff tomorrow. It's just it's evolving constantly, and um, but we're going to try to be creative because the thing people need to understand is this: we're probably going to it's going to go until next year. So before, uh, before a vaccine, a vaccine. Oh and um, it's, <clears throat> we need to take care of our, um, anyone that has Im immune suppressed system or is elderly with any underlying medical conditions. We need to be very protective and we have to figure out creative ways to help them be safe. Um, so keep, in the meantime, keep washing your hands. That's the number one thing you can do. And learn to elbow bump. Yeah. <laughs> no more hands. hugging. No more I hugging. I mean, this is a big deal. No hugging. I met with them. Um, no handshaking. Lisa White today, who's done an amazing job. Is obviously a lot of people know she's our downtown nurse through the FERCOG, and uh, she's testified before um, the Senate this week and um, or last week. It's going last by week. last week. Yeah. Um, she's just extremely knowledgeable in this stuff and very helpful, and she's kind of helping us guide guide through it too. But we talked about. Um, the information we put out being just concise and in kind of one spot. So, because there's a lot of information coming at everybody all over the place and, and you can get overwhelmed pretty easily. So we're just gonna try and keep it just simple and uh, straightforward so people can know what to look yeah. at. And we're, you know. We're... I don't know if you heard the news or not, but Cambridge College has told the students not to return after spring break. Yes. Or Harvard, Harvard the same. 
Yep. 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 The Smith bulb show has been canceled, and I mean, there's a All lot of Fannie Mae stuff. Yep. Yeah. I right now it's it's close confines where you have a lot of people. That's probably not a good thing to do. But we're going to take the activities one by one and 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 see how bad. We, we have no information, that's the thing. The testing is just not being done yet, um, and we, we'll have more information every day for this next week or so, and then we'll have a com more complete picture on how we're gonna react in the community. It's just, it's very hard with the absence of, we have to assume it's gonna be circulating, but as a mom, everybody knows that when everybody leaves this valley for spring break, and then they come back, you know, having four kids in elementary school at one time, that week after spring break is over, everybody starts getting sick. So I really, the, the schools really are out until um, March 22nd. So that Friday and the following Monday, the March 30th, I, I think we have to the end of the month before it really starts popping here, if it's going to pop. So um, I can't say it's not already here because I think that you know, we're, we just have too many people coming and going um, out of the valley, but it, it's under the surface and, it's, and it has an ability to be contained or mitigated at this point. I think at the end of the, we, that's why it's so important right now to organize, get our habits, our cleaning habits and our, what we're gonna do in the next two weeks and then figure out how we're gonna, you know, protect our community. And I, I honestly just, being a mom, I think that's, and a grandmother, that's when people get sick. That's, a, that's you know, that just is a normal scope of things. So this is probably no different. And we, we need to sort ourselves out in the next week or so. Okay.